How you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Today I want to do the second video on thinking about change. I did one earlier in the week about um, that thinking about change can alter your life forever, you know, and just the process of thinking about change can alter your life forever. And today, um, uh, I just want to go over that the fact that, that thinking about change is tiring, right? You know, it's it takes a lot of brain energy. Um, I mean, as I alluded to in the last video, your brain takes up a huge amount of resources, physical resources. So, uh, in terms of getting up in the morning, you feel fresh. Um, your brain burns up a lot of that energy during the day. Your brain burns up a lot of the calories that you take in. Uh, during the day in, in just uh, in your day-to-day -day thinking right that's why we're evolved to um, sort of be very expedient about the ways that we think and what we think about and you know our, our brains have evolved uh, habits and subconscious thinking in order to do this you know we can get through most of the day by doing these things doing things habitually I mean how often do you think about the fact that you're walking or you're talking or you're looking at things or you're hearing these all take up energy but they're things that you do subconsciously um, a lot of thinking that we do is done uh, on a subconscious level you know we don't actually think about what we're thinking you know when you're reading a book you sort of get into the the story of the book or um, what the words of what the the author is trying to portray you know the images and the sounds that he's trying to portray instead of the actual words on the paper and you know it's when you like when you're when you're cycling a bike, for instance, and when you, if you start thinking about the actual process of cycling the bike, you run a risk of falling off the bike, you know, because we're not designed to do that. So I'm saying that um, uh, just the process of thinking is is, is tiring in, in and of itself. Now, change thinking is just adds a whole different level of thinking to your daily uh, needs. What you have to do. Um, you know, so when you're thinking about quitting drinking, there's so many different areas of your life that you've got to think about because alcohol is uh, has become a part of your life in a variety of different ways and it's that essence that you have to take out of it and that's where you have to deal with the alcohol is not in quitting the drinking alcohol itself but in altering all the different areas of your life where alcohol was involved, right? So, as I said before, I mean, you might be using alcohol to sleep, you might be using it to uh, forget about problems, to relax in the evening, to socialize, whatever, you know, you've been using alcohol for, for entertainment value, for getting over bored and whatever. And now you've got to think of alternative ways to do that. Um, I'm going through this myself at the moment, just going through a lot of personal change. Um, my father just passed away a few months ago. We're still trying to sort of get our heads around that, that he's not around anymore, you know. Uh, for anyone who's lost somebody close to them. Um, you know, if dad was really close to me, we were, I was really close to my dad. So it's taken a lot of time to adjust to that. Where my brother is moving away now, he's been here for uh, three years and he was living with my dad and he was, uh, my dad was, uh, got pretty frail in his old age. And lucky enough, my, my brother was sort of on his own. So he moved in with my dad and he helped him out. So now he's, he's moving away and that's a big change. Um, because I'm sort of close to my brother as well. Um, uh, we're moving house um, in the next few weeks. Uh, we're moving from um, where we, we have been and we're going into the country. And it's just a house on its own. And it's just all that thinking that we have to do. Um, there's just a, a, a lot of things that's happened. I've just found out that I'm going to be a granddad for the first time. Um, I'm starting a um, university course, a psychology course and counselling course in uh, with the Open University degree in February so just a lot of different things that I've had to think about over the last um, couple of months last few months and I feel tired with the whole thing you know it just it, you know it just drains your energy so this video is about that basically and you know, one of the things that I'd sort of um, and about what what you're what you can do, right, and not to sort of think too deeply into every different nook and cranny of what's going on, because a lot of these things are never going to happen, you know. Um, uh, there's certain people out there who are worry warts and will basically just 
think about, well, what happens if this person says that, or if they say that, then I'm going to say this, and if they say that, then I'm going to say this, you know? And it's just a, it's a fruitless exercise because you don't know what other people are going to say, you know? I mean, I've done this myself in, in several different occasions where I know I'm going to be confronted by something and I'll try and work out exactly and I'll go, well, I'll start off with a premise, right? A premise that they're going to be sort of aggressive or something like that towards me. And I'll go, well, if they say this, I'm going to say that, right? And if they follow up with this, I'm going to say that. And I'll go through these thousands of combinations of what could possibly be said, you know, and when it's going to be said and how it's going to be said and what my responses will be. And I walk into the situation and the premise was completely false from the beginning. So it didn't even start out that way. So the whole conversation went in a completely different direction. And it was something that I dealt with in the moment because that was just it. I had to deal with it. That was just it. So don't stress about these areas. Don't, you know, get your expectations up, false expectations where you think a certain thing is going to happen in a certain way because usually it's not going to happen the way you think it's going to happen, right? So, you know, just keep that one in mind. Um, another thing is to is to try and plan. So you can plan a series of events of where you want to end up and then work your way backwards to how you're going to get there, right? Um, but get your plan on paper, right? Um, your thoughts that you're thinking at the moment, get those down on paper because when you get the thoughts out of your head, you don't have to spend any more time thinking about them in your mind, you know? And, you know, if you're anything like me, if, if I keep having thoughts in my head without writing them down on paper, they will sort of keep regurgitating themselves over and over again. And I'll find myself going over the same uh, conversations or the same thoughts over and over again. I'll even wake myself up halfway through the night thinking about these bloody things. But I know that if I put it down on paper, you know, figuratively speaking, I can put it onto the computer or whatever it is. But as long as I get them out of my head and into, onto a hard copy, I find that, that I do that less and less, you know. And finally, just accept that the change process is going to expend a lot of energy. It's tiring, you know. You're going to get tired through this, so just accept that, you know. Feed your body and you feed your mind. Give your body the, the right nutrition. A lot of people forget this and they sort of, they think that they can live on Coke and uh, burgers and ship food and just put in whatever crap they want into the bodies and that their mind is going to respond. And it's a fact of life that you are what you eat. If you put crap in, then you're going to get crap out. You know, you might feel physically full when you're eating this junk food, but it's not doing anything for your body. Your body can only draw on the raw resources that you put into your body. And if you're giving it shit, then that's what it's got to, to, to draw on. You know, when, when I say that your brain burns 30% or 40% of your body's, of the energy um, that you put into your body, of the calories that you put into your body, um, I'm talking about it takes, it takes a lot of the nutrients and the vitamins, all this kind of stuff that it needs, right, to think straight thoughts. I mean. Your thoughts are chemical processes. You know, they're, they're, it's not just something that happens magically out of the air. It's, a, it's an actual chemical reaction that's happening in your brain and pr promoting these thoughts, you know? So in order for those chemicals to be produced, it's got to have the right building blocks for the chemicals. Otherwise, your thoughts are gonna be short-circuiting all the time. So feed your body with good nutrition, fruit and vegetables, right? Main sources, right? Get those into you. Um, good carbohydrates, you know, you're talking about brown rice, brown pasta, um, brown whole wheat bread, you know, proper bread, not that squishy crap that you buy in the shop that's just full of air, you know, the proper hard stuff that you buy, um, you know, give yourself the right nutrition and your brain will give you back the, the right output, you know, so that's my tips if, um, you know, it's going to be tiring, you know, the, the whole process of change is tiring, but you can offset that by giving yourself good nutrition. You can sort of plan properly and get these plans on paper and just same thing, write your thoughts down, you know, get your thoughts out of your head and onto paper and you'll stop yourself from regurgitating these things over and over again. You have to do this. You have to plan. You have to think about what you're going to do because otherwise, you know, you can't just think, well, getting the alcohol out of my life is enough. It's not enough. Right? That's just the start, it's just the catalyst to move you away from the alcohol and towards your new life. And that's what this whole thing is about. 
Alcohol is just fucking, it's something that stopped me from doing something. Consider that, um, consider that alcohol is like an elastic band, right? That's holding you back, right? So there's a, a tree behind me there, right? And that's the alcohol, right? And, oh, that's my past life, right? This is whatever, and that, there's an elastic band holding me there to this, to this tree. The behavior is the elastic band, the tree is the alcohol, and the behavior of me drinking the alcohol is holding me back to the thing. And all I have to do is lean back and snip the wire, right? Stop the flow of the alcohol in the first place. That's the start of it all. Then you have to change the basic relationship that you have throughout your life. You have to change all these other areas of your life that have revolved around alcohol. To do that requires a lot of hard work, a lot of hard thinking, and it's gonna be tiring, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but you have to put up with it. End of story, that's just what you're gonna to have to do. So um, if you like that video, give us a thumbs up, um, share it, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Um, if you wanna support Alcohol Mastery, you can either go over to the website and uh, we have some great courses over there. Uh, we've got how to stop drinking alcohol, and prepare to stop drinking alcohol. And we've of course coming out in a few weeks, which uh, leads you through day by day, the first 30 days of any alcohol quit. Um, uh, or you can go over to patreon.com and become a patron of the show. So until next time, uh, I hope you have a great day. I'm Kevin O'Hara for alcoholmastery.com. Stay safe, keep the alcohol out of your mouth, uh, onwards and upwards. Take care of yourself. Bye now, bye.